Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to discuss about secret management in Databricks. Now there might be a situation where you need to put in some credentials or sensitive URLs or host name into your notebooks or jobs. Now it is not a good practice to put those credentials in plain string formats in notebooks or jobs. So what is the better way? In Databricks there is something which is called a secret scope. A secret scope is something where you can add your secrets and later use them in your notebooks and jobs. Today we are going to see two types of secret scopes that Databricks allow. The first one is Azure Key Vault backed secret scope where we would use Azure Key Vault in order to store our secrets. The second one is Databricks backed where we will use Databricks to store our secret. And in both the cases we will create secret scopes and we are going to use Databricks utility in order to get our secrets and use them in our notebook. Now before we can start with this if you have not seen our previous videos go ahead and watch them first. You can click on the i button at the top. So, without any further delay, let's begin. Now, the first type of secret scope that we are going to see is Azure Key Vault Back. In this case, we would need a key vault to be created in Azure. So, I'll quickly switch over to Azure first. So, I am in my Azure portal. Now, in the search bar, I'll search for Key Vault. Okay. So, I'll see Key Vaults here. I'll click on this. Now, I'll click on Create Key Vault. Once we are on this page, I'll quickly scroll down and I'll select the resource group that we have been using since the beginning, which is Ease with Data ADB RG. And now I'll give the name. So I'll give the name as AKV SK01. Okay. Now, since this is unique, you'll see a tick mark here. Okay. Now I'm going to select the location, which is Central India, which will be same as the Databricks that we are using. The pricing tier would remain standard. I'll scroll down and I'll change the days to return to 7. Okay. Now I'll click on Next. Now, I'll not change anything here. I'll let the principal model to be role best access control. I'll click on next. Now, once we are in this networking page, we are not going to allow Azure Key Vault access publicly, right? So I'll change it to selected network. And if I scroll down, I'm going to select the virtual network that we created for our Azure Databricks. So I'll click on this. I'll click on add existing virtual network. On the right hand side, I'm going to select ADB VNet that we created. In subnets, I'm going to select all. Next, I'll click on add. And you can see it will add both the subnets to this. Now, this is only allow the VNet that we created for our Databricks to connect with the Key Vault. Okay. Now, I'll scroll down and I'll check this where it says allow trusted Microsoft services to bypass firewall. Now, I'll click on next. And now I'm going to provide some tag which is owner, which is ease with data. And I'm going to click on next. Now, it will run some validations. I'll wait for it. Now, the validation is complete. I'm going to click on create. So this will take few minutes to get created. I'll pause the video here and I'll come back when this is done. Awesome. Our deployment is complete. So I'll quickly go to the key vault that we created by clicking this button. Now, this is the key vault that we created right now. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to allow Azure Databricks to connect to this key vault. For that, I'm going to get into IAM and I'll click on add role assignment. Now, the permission I need to provide is key vault and i'm going to select administrator now you can change this as per your requirement i'm going to click on next and now i'm going to add azure databricks here so i'll let it be user groups and service principle and i'm going to click on select members now i'll search for azure databricks now you can see an application here azure databricks just select this and click on select now this is done we will click on review and assign Great. We have added permissions for Databricks. Okay. Now our key vault is ready for access. Now, before we go ahead and add secret scope, there's one more setting I'll do so that we can see the keys. So I'll go to settings. I'll go to networking. And in the bottom where you can see firewall, I'm going to add my IP here so that I can see the keys that I add. So I'll click on this plus button here and I'm going to add my IP here. And I'm going to click on apply. So this will right now whitelist my IP to use this Azure key vault. So this is done. So I'll quickly go back to overview and our Azure Key Vault setting is done. Now let's switch over to Databricks to create our scope which is backed by Azure Key Vault. I'm back in my Databricks workspace. Now you need to go into this URL which is after your workspace you need to provide hash secrets slash create scope in order to land on this page. So this is the page where you can create the secret scope which is backed by Azure Key Vault. Okay. So the first thing that we are going to do is we need to provide a scope name. So I'll just write AKV. Okay, so this is Azure Key Vault scope. So I'll just give it AKV as a name. I'll let the principal be creator. Okay, the next thing I need is DNS name. 
So I'll quickly switch over to my Azure Key Vault and I'll copy this Vault URI from here and I'm going to paste it here. Next thing is Resource ID. On the left hand side, I'm going to click on Properties. Now I'll copy this Resource ID from here and I'm going to paste it here. Now this is all done. Let's go ahead and click on Create. Great, our secret scope AKV has been added. So now we can use this in our Databricks in order to store secret and even use it using Azure Keyword. So let me just go ahead and click on OK. So now that our setup for secret scope backed by Azure Keyword is ready, let me quickly switch over to a notebook. Now I have created a new notebook called Secret Scopes and we are going to use this notebook for today's session. So let me just zoom in a bit. Okay, now we are going to see the AKB backed secret scope. Okay. So we can always use the dbutils command to do that. So let me just type dbutils dot secrets dot help. Once you do this, you can see all of the options that are available to play around with secrets. Okay. So you can always list all the scopes that are available and you can even list all the secrets within a scope. You can even use get command in order to get the particular secret from a scope. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a list scope command here. So I'll just type list scopes. Okay, and let me just run this. And now you can see the scope that we created, which is AKV. Okay, if you want to see all of the secrets that are present for this scope, you can just go ahead and change it to list. And within this bracket, you can provide the name of the scope. So for us, we can use AKV for now. And let me just run this. So now you can see there are no secrets stored in our Azure Key Vault as of now. So let's go ahead and add some secrets in our Azure Key Vault. So I'll quickly switch over to my Azure portal. Now I'm back in my Azure Key Vault. I'm going to click on objects on the left hand side and I'm going to click on secrets. Now there are no secrets available. Let me just add one. So I'll click on generate and this is a manual operation. So I'll just add a secret as of now. So I'll just type db password and I'm going to add some secret here in order to store the db password and rest of the things I'll not touch. Only make sure that the enabled is yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and click on create. So as soon as I do that, you can see that particular secret is created in Azure keyboard. And let me rerun this query. So now you can see that particular secret that we created in Azure Key Vault is available in your Databricks. We can go ahead and use this. So to use this, we are going to again use dbutils command. So I'll click on this code and I'm going to write dbutils.secrets.get. Now we first need to provide the name of the scope, which is AKV. So I'll just use AKV here. And then I need to provide the name of the secret, which is DB password. So I'll just copy this from here and I'll paste it here. Okay. And if I run this, this is going to fetch that particular secret from Azure Key Vault. And for now, it is not displaying anything saying redacted. But you can always go ahead and use this command in order to get it and use it in your JDBC URLs or in your JDBC queries. Okay, great. Now that we understand how we can create Azure Key Vault backed secret scope, let's go ahead and create Databricks backed secret scope. Okay. So in order to do that, we will need Databricks CLI. So first we need to install Databricks CLI. For that, we need to go to Google and we need to search for the install Databricks CLI. Okay. Once you search this, you can go to the second page, install or update Databricks CLI. So I'm using Windows. If you are using Linux and Mac, you can go ahead and follow the approach for Linux and Mac. Okay. So I'll show you how you can do it on Windows. So I'll scroll down and I'm going to click on this Winget, which is for Windows. Okay. Now I'm going to copy this particular command and I'm going to use command prompt. So I'll quickly open command prompt. And I'm going to paste that command that I copied. So I'll just click on paste anyway. So it is going to download and install Databricks for us. So I'll just type Y to run this command. Once the installation is successful, the first thing that you need to do is you need to restart your command prompt. So I've already done so. So I'll just going to type Databricks minus V in order to validate. So it gives me a prompt saying Databricks CLI and the version. So our Databricks CLI installation is complete. Okay. Now the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to authenticate our Databricks CLI with our Databricks workspace. So to do that, what I'll do is I'll type Databricks auth and I'll type login. And once I hit enter, it will give me a profile name. So I just need to provide profile name. So I'll just type SK as my profile name. I'll hit enter and it will ask for the host name. So I'll quickly go back and I'll copy the host name from top. I'll come back to the command prompt and I'll paste it here and I'll hit enter. So once I hit enter, it is going to open a particular tab. I'll just need to log in into this tab. Once I do that, you can see it says authenticated. And if I go to my command prompt, it says profile added successfully. So our Databricks CLI setup is complete. Let's go ahead and create our Databricks backed secret scope. So let me just first clear this screen. So I'll just type CLS 
Now, I'll quickly go back to the documentation that has been provided by Databricks. So, I'll quickly switch over. I'll scroll down in the documentation. And this is where we can use Databricks CLI in order to work with scopes. So, let me just copy the first command, which will list all the scopes that are available. So, I'll just copy this. I'll open my command prompt and I'll paste it here. I'll hit enter. So, it will show me the AKV, which is Azure Key Vault Mac. Okay. Let's go ahead and create one that is backed by Databricks. So, I'll quickly go back. And if I scroll up, you can see here how we can create a scope, right? So let me just copy this command and I'll go back and I'll paste it here. So this is Databricks secret, create scope and the name of the scope. So I'll just change the name here. I'll type DB hyphen scope. Okay. I'll just hit enter. So it has created the scope. Let's go ahead and list it again. So we can see both the scopes listed, right? One is backed by a jockey vault. The second we created backed by Databricks. Let's go ahead and validate this in our notebook. So I'll quickly go back to my notebook. And I'm going to run that same list scope command. So I'll just change these two list scopes. Okay. And I'm going to run this. So now you can see two of the scopes. The first one is backed by a jockey vault. And the second one is backed by Databricks. Okay. So let's go ahead and see what all secrets are there. So I'll just copy this. And I'm going to change this command again to list. And I'm going to paste the scope name inside. And I'm going to run this. So right now, since there are no secrets in the scope, so you can see it is empty. Let's go ahead and add a secret in Databricks backed secret scope. So I'll quickly open command prompt again. And now I'm going to type data bricks and we are going to use secrets and we are going to put secrets. So I'll type put secret. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to provide the name of the scope, which is DB hyphen scope. Okay. The next thing is the name of the secret. So let me just put DB hyphen host and then the value. So we'll put string value. So I'll just type string value. And we'll add the value of the secret. For example, the name of our host is xyz.com. Okay. So let me just hit enter. So this particular secret is added. Okay. Let me just go back to Databricks notebook now and let me run this. Awesome. Now, if you see, we have added this host. Okay. So I've already added one more here, but you can also see that one secret that we added right now, which is DB host. Okay. So we can also list secret. Now, if you want to get the value of the secret, you just need to make it get. And first, you need to provide the name of the scope. And then you need to provide the key of the secret. So I can just copy DB host from here and I'll paste it here. Okay. And if I run this, I'll get the value. Now this is redacted so that no one can see the value of the secret. But once you start using this in your jobs or in your notebook, it will automatically replace the value wherever it is necessary. So let's consider a case. If you are reading from JDBC like this, you can always save the JDBC URL in secrets and then you can call the value like this. So you can always call dbutils.secrets.get and then the name of the scope and the name of the value. For example, if you save it as DB URL, so that would be the name of the key that you call, right? Similarly, you can save the table name or username or passwords in your secret scopes, and you can always use them in the notebook or jobs using dbutil commands like this. So now you understand how you can manage secrets in Databricks using secret scopes, which are backed by Azure Key Vault, or you can go ahead and use Databricks backed secret scopes. Now, you can always manage the permission for the secret scopes. It means who can use this secret scope, who cannot, by using some ACL. And that you can do using Databricks CLI command. So if I go back to the documentation, and if I scroll down, this is where you can use some ACLs in order to provide some permission to principal in order to use some scopes. Okay, And you can manage this using Databricks CLI. Today, we understood how you can save your secrets or credentials or sensitive information in secret scopes, which are backed by a jockey vault and Databricks. In our next video, we are going to talk about users, groups, and service principles. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, and keep sharing.